Hi, welcome back. If you're new here, my name is Tommy Hodgins, and you can find me on Twitter as Innovati. This year for Mary CSS Miss, I've been tweeting out one CSS technique every day where you can take valid CSS and transform it into something fun or useful. We've already covered a lot of different techniques, including supporting custom at rules, supporting custom selectors, custom properties, custom functions, custom units, and I've been saving up for one really cool technique, and that's what this video is about. But if you missed any of the previous days, go to Twitter, check them out. And without further introduction, let's get into this video. Here on my screen, I have the results from the State of CSS 2019 survey. When they asked CSS authors what features were missing from CSS, the top three were container queries, parent selector, and nesting. I've already done plenty of videos and made plugins for container queries. And I've also covered parent selector quite a bit. So in this video, I'm going to cover a way that you can do nesting in valid CSS that works in browsers today. Now, nesting is coming to CSS someday. Here's the draft that they're working on right now. So nesting is the ability to include one style rule inside the other with the selector of the child rule relative to the selector of the parent rule. So here's an example of what that might look like. This is flat, unnested CSS. And this is one proposed syntax that we could use maybe someday in CSS in the future to express the same thing. Inside the rule for table color table, when we see ampersand space TD, we can expand that to this full selector. Now, there are a couple different syntaxes in this spec. There's the ampersand syntax as well as a custom at nest at rule. And both of these could change before they arrive. So we don't want to try to polyfill or support these too early. So what can we do that will work in browsers today to give us nesting? Our solution should have four qualities. It should be valid in CSS syntax. It should work in browsers today. It should not conflict with the syntax for native nesting in the future. And it should be future proof. So here in this purple editor, everything I type in the left side is CSS, and everything that shows up on the right side is what the browser sees. So if I write a rule for the selector A, we see that the browser can see that and knows that there's a rule. If I add a property like color red, we see that the browser can parse that, it knows what it is, and it keeps it. But if I were to put something like B with a declaration list here and say color green, it doesn't know what to do with that. That's not valid in CSS syntax, so it just drops it. Same with an ampersand or the at nest. So there's no way that we can use what we think the future CSS syntax will be. But there is something that we can use today that works in browsers today and will always stay separate from whatever the syntax for nesting will be. And that is we can turn this into a custom property. So to do that, we have to add at least two dashes to the front of the selector and a colon. Now you'll notice that the value of this custom property named dash dash b can be read and held by the browser. We're going to add a semicolon after it just to make sure that if we add any future properties that it'll be correct. But this is something now that this is valid in CSS, the browser understands it, and we're able to reason about this. So this isn't quite the solution, uh, but I'll show you what I've got. Over here in the green editor, this is the editor that has nesting enabled. So I'm going to paste in the exact same CSS as before. Now, for this solution, we need something custom in here. We need a name that will namespace all of our custom properties that are being used for nesting away from the custom properties that are just something like BG or something that we're using somewhere else. So this can be anything. You could say process all of the custom properties that start with nest dash and handle them one certain way. For purposes of this demo, the simplest and shortest thing to do is to support just a third dash. So I'm going to say that anything with three dashes any property that starts with three dashes is a nested rule, and that anything that comes after those three dashes is a part of the selector. So as you can see here, this property is being processed and turned into a rule for the same selector that it's nested inside. If we were to add B here, then we would see AB with no space. 
Now we can't add a space inside a property name. That's not valid in CSS syntax. It sees the three dashes. It doesn't know what to do. It then sees this, but it drops it because it didn't know how to make sense of that. For any character that's a special character that wouldn't normally be allowed in a name, we can just use a backslash before that character to escape it. So now we have a custom property with the name of dash space B. And we can turn this into A space B by replacing the triple dash with the original selector. So this is one way that we can write a selector like A space B or uh, A uh, dot demo and nest it inside another rule. Now, these nested rules that get expanded can also themselves have nested rules inside of them. So I'm going to say B, and then I'm going to do another rule here for C. So here you can see that we have a rule for ABC nested inside of a rule for AB nested inside a rule for A. Now, I'm going to show how this works, and it's probably not as complicated as you might think. So here's the code for it. We're bringing in a library to parse CSS, and then the rest of this is just one function that expands an entire nested style sheet. Inside the nested style sheet expansion function, we have two functions here, expand nested rule and expand nested at rule. And the only thing that this style sheet function processes is it will parse the string as a style sheet. And for each rule, it's going to decide whether it is a regular style rule with a selector or whether it's an at rule, something like a media query or at supports. And if it's a regular rule, it runs it through that expand nested rule function. And if it's an at rule, it runs it through the expand nested at rule function. I'm going to look at this expand nested at rule function first because at rules can contain other rules. So some of the things that we find in here may end up getting run through the expand nested rule function as well. So if we encounter an at rule, at rules can contain nothing, they can contain declarations, or they can contain other child rules. So we're going to look for where the first colon inside is, if there is a value. We're going to look for where the first at symbol is and where the first block is. Now, if we think that there are rules inside based on the position of these things that we can find, then we will parse the child rules. If there's one or more rules, we will process them. And for each rule, because it can either be a style rule or an at rule itself, we're going to treat it as though it's a whole style sheet and then let it figure out for its children how it should process them. Once we have processed all of the rules that were inside of our original at rule, we replace the original child rules with the output expanded rules. So in the case where we have either in the style sheet or inside an at rule encounter just a regular style rule with a selector, we can run it through this function. Now this function, the first thing it does is if there is our custom property name, the double dash with either a dash or any other custom identifier we want to use, it will output one copy of the rule minus any of those custom nested rules. Now for any of those custom nested rules, it's going to take the original selector, split it apart because it could be a list of selectors, and then it's also going to split apart the selector of the nested rule, and it's going to join those selectors together and then you get the output rule as part of, you get the expanded rule as part of the output. At the end, you return the original rule and any nested rules following it. So what this means is, here if we have a comma b, and we've nested c inside of here, we end up with a c b c. And if we had another list in here, like C comma D, then we get four selectors with all the different combinations, A, C, A, D, B, C, B, D.
I'm going to show a couple examples here and how they expand. So here I have a project called Anesthetic. It's on GitHub and NPM, and it also has command line utilities. So for example, the node one imports expand nested style sheet. It also imports the file system module. And when you pass an argument to it, if you run this with an argument and the argument is a file name, it will read the content of that file and process that. Otherwise, the CSS that it processes is just the string you pass in. So with that, we can use Node to expand a style sheet that's on our hard drive. So here in the tests folder, I have a few. If we look at alphabet.css, here is a valid CSS style sheet that has every single letter of the alphabet nested inside another rule. And I've got just a uh, invalid or custom property. It's not a real custom property, but I just put level one, level two, all the way down. So if we process that, we should see 26 rules going from A to all the way from A to Z. So let's go ahead and try that now. Here's the output going from A level one to a selector for A through Z at level 26. So let's check out another one. Here I have headings.css where we have a selector list for H1 through six nested inside space plus and then nested inside another list of h1 through 6. So we should get back every combination of h1 plus h1, h1 plus h2, all the way through to h6, and h2 plus h1, h3 plus h1. And so we have every combination of h1 to 6 with every combination of h1 to 6. Let's see what that looks like. Ooh, that's a big one. Let's prettify that. There, so there is our very long selector in its expanded form. So here's another example similar to what we showed. Selector lists, we should have 1A, 1B, 2C, 3C, and 4D, 4E, 5D, 5E. So let's see if that is what we see. So we have 1A, 1B, 2C, 3C, 4D, 4E, 5D, 5E. So there's one way that you can do nesting in valid CSS syntax today, in a way that works in browsers today, in a way that does not conflict with native nesting, and is future-proof. These will always be custom properties, they'll always be supported, and they'll always be safe for you to use in this way even when CSS has native nesting. So if you're curious about this, do check out Anesthetic. It's on GitHub, it's on NPM, and there is a command line utility for Node and for Deno. This step, you don't even need to build this into your preprocessor. This could be done at any point, uh, client side or server side. You can do this in the browser like this demo. You can do it to prepare a file and then send only the flattened CSS. Um, so it should be very modular and easy to add to anything. And the code is only about 100 lines. So if you want to play around with it or change how it works or support something that's a little bit different than this, it should be easy enough to dive in, start messing around, and see what happens. Hopefully you have fun with this. And until next year, hope you have a merry CSSmas.